Hello and welcome everyone to the Lunar She Spire cartoon fan podcast. This is episode number 287 and today we're going to be talking about the newest episodes of Steven Universe Future, Together Forever, and Growing Pains. My name is Ken and joining me today, as is normally the case, are... I'm GC13. I'm Isabel. And I'm David. I shouldn't say, I guess, joining me, because I have not been here in uh, approximately 200 episodes, <laughs> I believe, but uh, let's <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice it's nice to have you back yeah we're having a we're having a bit of a throwback for the finale we're bringing it back for the end of steven universe baby <laughs> gotta get a retrospective and nostalgic it's appropriate it's appropriate these episodes though are super super good like holy especially the first mm-hmm. one so together uh forever is probably one of my favorite episodes like, the first eight minutes are just pure delightfulness, and then it turns really hard really fast, and it's uh, <laughs> extremely difficult to watch. Yeah, that's that's really painful. The, the, like, joyfulness of, like, Stephen preparing to propose was really, really great. I love the spring and the step, and, like, man, I will also never not enjoy the way that songs in Stephen Universe, like, build on each other thematically, and I, I really mm-hmm. loved this little moment that Steven had with Connie. And uh, I can't remember the name of the person who mixed it, but there was a really great tweet, too, that um, the person who mixed the song sort of what focused on bringing out Steven's sort of maturity in his voice and those, like, mid and deeper tones. And you really felt that just, like, ultra sweetness and ultra, like, Steven just felt really adult in that moment. And yet he was also making a very childish <laughs> decision at that time. And oh, my goodness. Yep. Oh my goodness. It's it's really sad, but you know what really jumps out at me about that scene with the song? How they consistently always only do three strings on their guitars, even on the <laughs> close-ups where they have no excuse. Uh, alternate universe, alternate rules. I know it's the most minor of complaints, but it jumps out at me. Yeah, I can't believe they didn't animate every string exactly uh, like the chords that were actually played. It's crazy. <laughs> Steven Universe animation flaws will never, uh, never end. I will forgive them on the on the distance shots. I will say when shows actually do that, it's super impressive when they actually have like the musicians uh, playing the instruments accurately. It's very nice. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't actually matter here. No. <laughs> I mean, you would think that Steven Universe would be like the show where they do that because of how how many people on the show's high-up levels, care so much about music. That's fair. I mean, it just takes some money and time, I think, <laughs> to get it. It's not, uh, I don't know, like, there aren't artistic constraints. It's probably just, like, a financial one more than anything, but... Yeah, yeah. it's just, like, it's, it's easier, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But that song, super sweet. Mm. I really love Steven's mix mm-hmm. of, like, uh, extreme romanticism, for lack of better words. Like, that's one of the most romantic things I've seen in media, for me personally. Like, things never hit me very hard in terms of romance, but, like, I was really feeling it. But also, he has, like, this bum Greg-ness about him. He has, like, this suit on, but he's still wearing jeans and sandals, and his ring <laughs> is just a glow stick. It's like... I don't know, it's this weird, yeah. weird mix of <laughs> attentiveness and, um, like, lack of attentiveness in other areas that would, like, traditionally be the focus. Uh, it's it's really nice and refreshing. I liked it. Yeah, and also, this is, it, it kind of hit me that romance, especially in, like, kids' shows, like, we've already had the sort of Ruby and Sapphire very Disney-esque love story play out in this show, but I feel like I've never seen this specific kind of genuine and, like, kind of long scene of just expressing loving feelings you don't get that like maybe you get the end of avatar the last airbender and you get a really sweet hug and and kiss or maybe people holding hands in cora but like and maybe you get really awkward teen dating scenarios but this was just like unadulterated wholesomeness and also (laughs) it's never gone so low i don't think i've ever seen a failed proposal happen and with such an understanding proposee uh in in any kids media ever so ultra impressive see that's why it's so hard for me to to watch this because connie's connie's sitting there the whole time listening to the song thinking oh this is this is so sweet and then the whole time steven's like okay and then i'm gonna propose and then we're gonna live our lives together as stevani forever and it's like ooh, the uh they both have very different ideas about what that song means 
I will say one like small nitpick for me is it really makes sense from Steven's perspective that he would uh, want to propose to Connie and get married to her. I completely understand that. But it does feel a little bit like making him stupid for the sake of the episode to have him specifically ask to be Stevani forever. Like that's taking it a little bit too far. It seems like he is definitely smart enough to know that human beings would find that to be a little bit weird, but fair enough. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he was encouraged by Garnet, and, and according to Garnet, there was no timeline where Stephen wasn't going to propose, which is kind of amazing, but also maybe <laughs> speaks to just how low he's feeling right now, because there were definitely undertones in that song and in the whole situation in general with him wanting to complete himself by becoming Stevani um, to avoid what he's been feeling. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Rather his, uh, I guess, mechanic to achieve his emotional fulfillment is to become Stevani, or rather it's just regular marriage. Like, it works thematically for this episode either way, and it makes sense for Steven as a character. So I would just say from a writing perspective, you could easily have just made his goal to be married in a regular way, and it wouldn't have felt as if he was being, <laughs> like, unnecessarily or unrealistically stupid, but... Uh, whatever. It's yeah. a very minor nitpick. <laughs> yeah. Well, it also makes it feel a little more creepy, too, when he's like, hey, Connie, uh, I even have a few justifications for why this is the best thing we should do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So what what do you think, Isabel? Do you think they handed Steven the idiot ball when, when he wanted to be <laughs> Stefani specifically? So did you notice that in this episode, Steven actually said his full name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah, don't know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't know sweetie pie that that was a cute callback Cutie. i can't Cutie believe pie. it's actually adopted as part of his legal name but i'll take yeah. it i don't think he even has a legal name i think he just like it shows back up in the next episode on his uh medical records <laughs> but i think that's just what yeah. he tells people yeah. i don't think he has like an actual legal name I don't think Greg is, like, doing, like, <laughs> no. his bare minimum as a parent, to be honest. Like, emotionally, definitely. <laughs> but in terms of, like, anything else, I think he's uh, actually failing quite hard. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't even <laughs> taken his son to the doctor. Like, holy. Yeah, I have... yeah not even that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it makes sense that when Stephen was born, it wasn't uh, at a hospital. And I guess Greg no. just uh, never, never thought to go register little baby Stephen <laughs> yeah. uh, with the government, so... I mean, Steven's a diamond. He is the government. <laughs> Steven is kind of the government. Well, no, it's all... Actually, that's a whole other topic. Who even knows what the government of the gems are now? Not even going to think about that. Hmm. Um, yeah, I want to think about that, but maybe another day. <laughs> maybe another day. That'll be our <laughs> years-long post-Steven Universe future discussion of just desperately clinging to the... Definitely not deeply explored topics of Steven Universe, including what did they do in, with democracy, <laughs> but... Maybe they'll pull a Rick and Morty and someday a Pearl will be elected by all the gems and she'll execute all of the diamonds. <laughs> oh, quietly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Per <laughs> are Pearls Mortys? Um, I don't know. There are some parallels. Maybe not that many. <laughs> well, does that mean our Pearl is the one true Pearl? Because I would agree with that. Our, our Pearl is definitely the one true Pearl. Yes. So we've been talking a little bit about growing pains, and there's just one thing that I wrote down about that. And that's that, you know, there was, in the middle, there was so much explanation coming from Dr. Maheshwar, and it's like this huge info dump that feels so right for the episode, like... I mean, it was definitely the moment that it was talking to, I think, children the most, but that was a good thing to happen. And I liked that Miss Maheshwar's, like, delivery was very direct and honest but also like firm um speaks to hopefully kids that well probably haven't experienced quite the level of things that steven has experienced but still it, it does feel very like we're going to spend 30 seconds to become a pbs educational tv show uh right now <laughs> but i will say that like i definitely learned something i've never heard things explained in that way and uh i really benefited from it so I, I can't hate it on it at all, and uh, I, I really liked it, yeah. Yeah, and that moment, man, the moment when she showed him his x-ray, that x-ray was devastating to, to recontextualize all those moments where Stephen was thrown around, and it, it reminded me of those episodes like where, you know, Stephen versus Amethyst, and, and Amethyst just 
pounded that kid's body in, into the ground and his bones were really breaking all those moments even ronaldo hitting him over the head with a potato no no you want to talk about recontextualizing things it's his little montage of all the bad things that happened to him yes. and she didn't even let him get out of season one and he didn't even <laughs> get all of them mm -hmm. from season one yeah. and it's like it started out as just a fun adventure series where the elements of danger were part of the fun and steven universe future is like no no, this was actually horrific. Why did you guys enjoy this, you monsters? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it really was. And how was Frybo not on that list? That's kind of amazing. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah, Dr. Mahesh Warren's explanation felt very much so like, oh, okay, so this is like the thesis statement of Steven Universe Future. This is what it's about. It was like kind of apparent before, but now you're just like making it like very explicit. So I really appreciated that. During the flashback, it occurred to me that Connie's not there for, like, probably not even 80% of the stuff Steven went through, but she's there for, like, enough of it, even if she's only there for, like, three or four things. That's enough for lifelong trauma as well. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't seem like we're going to explore, like, Connie's trauma, but realistically, she would also have quite a bit. Why do you think she's throwing herself into her studies so hard? Oh, okay. I mean, hey, if that's an angle they take, that'd be super interesting. I mean, she is actually studying ridiculously hard. It's like, okay, I'm a lot of precisely a 15 minute break, and then I have to be right back at it. I mean, there's definitely that kind of like study and, and work culture. It's actually interesting. The show is sort of uh, not casting that in any kind of negative light. Oh, you're right, actually. I guess it's going more under the like, uh, the like more accepting, like, hey, sometimes you got to hustle, but you know, sometimes you got to put yourself first. But uh, you know, she's giving herself breaks. So I think Connie's. Doing it right, even though cram school as a concept sounds rough. Oh, but, but talking about a precisely 15-minute break, that part towards the end of Together Forever, where her alarm goes off, and then she tries to be like, oh, my, my break should be up, but Steven, I need to stay here with you. And Steven's like, no, no, it's cool, I'm fine. They, they did this in Bismuth Casual, and they, they've done it earlier, but it's this one in Bismuth Casual that really jump out. It's like, part of the message of Together Forever is like, no! They're not fine. They're just saying that. They're liars. You have to stay with them. Yeah, well, and even Greg was doing that on the phone call, too. Like, Yeah, everyone does it, and Steven pushes them back. Well, it was showing, too, that, though, people are trying to reach out and, and give Steven opportunities, and it's showing just how when, you, when, when you're like Steven and you're really in that depressive state, it can be really hard to recognize that you shouldn't be doing that, that you shouldn't be pushing people away even when they're really trying to reach out and ask what's wrong. And, you know, maybe that can make you also feel as maybe the person who's like Greg or Connie that either you should probe more or maybe not probe. I'm, I'm not sure what you should do in this scenario, except, yeah, that's well, be there for them, which is ultimately what they did. <sighs> yeah, that's that's something I really hope that the series does in its last six episodes. I hope we finally get an example of somebody successfully not letting Steven push them away. So I, I just need to see a successful model of how do I actually successfully help somebody rather than let them talk me out of doing it. Mm. Because we've seen lots of that so far. I mean, it's a it's a kid's show. It should, it should have life lessons, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, go, I go to Steven Universe for my being a friendly friend badge, right? Did he get the badge at the end of Together Forever? I don't remember. <laughs> Does he still get the proposal badge? Yeah, that would I mean, be. He, he did propose. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. He earned it. I'll... He proposed. Oh, speaking of badges, though, Ruby, that is clearly a wilderness painting badge, not a wilderness sketching badge. I mean, <clears throat> rubies, right? What you gonna do? Yeah, rubies. Seriously, Ruby and Sapphire. I still. I mean, they threw in that line that Garnet said, oh, you know, there, you were only ever going to propose. But from the way it was written, Stephen wasn't thinking about proposal until Ruby brought it up. So I no, Ruby. He admitted that he had been thinking about it before. That's so adorable, yes. by the way. One of the most adorable things I've ever seen is him like sheepishly admitting that, well, of course I've been thinking about it. That's so cute. I wonder if Garnet did that because the sooner he does it, the quicker they can help him. Right. Because he was actually talking with Garnet there. He he would not have been talking to her before. Do Ruby and Sapphire not, like, know what Garnet knows? Because if she knew that was going to happen, then why did Ruby and Sapphire not know? Hmm. Yeah. Well, and mm. side note, I can't believe it took this long, but finally, I think finally, they've shown us 
exactly how future vision works. I mean, we've gotten like a million different pieces that sort of build up to the same thing. But I think this view where Sapphire is teaching that class and actually shows the like probabilities that she's multiplying. I think she was making all that up. You think she was making that up for the purpose of the lesson? Just for the ocean wave? Well, to mess Could with be. Steven, she just needs to have a complex equation for the wave to come over. Because she knows that the wave's going to come over at a precise time. So I don't think that's exactly how she does it. Sapphire sees the one single future. But stuff like love completely throws her future vision off. Garnet sees probabilities, so she's much better at parsing stuff like that. So... Sapphire would not actually be calculating the probability of a proposal. If she understood how love worked, she'd be able to tell you, would it work or would it not? She just has no <laughs> idea how love works, so she couldn't teach a class on love and future vision. That would be Garnet's job. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Okay. I mean, that doesn't necessarily explain why she didn't know what Garnet seemed to know, but it explains why she can't see <laughs> he, what well, Garnet yeah. can see. Okay, so back to growing pains. So in when you see Steven's application, I notice it said his height. He is five foot six. <laughs> I'm so glad that Steven is confirmed as five foot six and also whatever his height was before makes <laughs> sense too. But it's just funny because people obviously have so much discourse in the fandom well, back yeah. in the day about everyone's proportions. It's just funny to see that height finally show up. Delmarva is the land of giants. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yes, every, everyone else is yeah. like seven feet tall, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Someone calculated that if Steven is five foot six, that means Pearl is six foot three. And Pearl and Greg are exactly the same height. So Greg is six foot three and not that tall. So, yeah, they're all huge. <laughs> you know, I'm, oh wow, you know I'm not oh. that tall. That must mean, you know, he said he wasn't that smart. The dude's tall and a genius as well. You know? <laughs> yeah. Also, in like the uh, in the image they're using to calculate that height, uh, Pearl was standing in the background, so she'd actually be like at least a little bit taller than that, which no one seems to acknowledge <laughs> in the thread. Mm. Uh. <laughs> hmm. Oh, speaking of confirming things, I think last episode Isabel brought up gems having. Uh, not having skeletons, and that was confirmed yes. here. Yes. They did talk about hard and soft structures of gems, which is still true, but gems definitely don't have skeletons. Uh, also, the gems make weird noises. Uncle Grandpa did not hear the same noise as that Miss Maheshwaran heard. I thought that would be mm. hilarious if she had also heard knocking back. That would have been an amazing... No. Um, <laughs> she doesn't have the same specialized gear that Uncle Grandpa has. Also, don't call her Miss Maheshwaran. She she went to medical school for crying out loud. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, Dr. Maheshwaran. <laughs> and we we also learned from those x-rays that Amethyst swallows all food whole. <laughs> well, we've already seen that. And <laughs> yeah, we have. Entire, entire cans of beans. Yeah, it's like, eh, why not, right? So, uh, so Isabel, I, I, got another, I got another question for you. Ruby Rider versus Ranger Ruby. Who wins? That's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Ruby uh, Rider. She had a song. <laughs> yeah, that song's pretty, uh... Okay, really, really, it's not fair yeah. bringing the song into it. Yeah, this is kind of an impossible decision, GC. I don't understand why you would place this weight upon any of us. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to do their own fusion. We're gonna, we're gonna need a third Ruby persona so they can form their own Rube Cube together. <laughs> Rube Cube. So how does it Make get worse? Classic Ruby. <laughs> how does it get worse from here? Oh, I hope it doesn't. <sighs> but like Stephen Corruption, right? Like we've seen the titles now. Mm hmm. And the leaks. These episodes already tore our boy up enough. Yeah, I don't know how it gets any more devastating personally for Steven than um, being told no for his proposal. Connie, I guess we didn't really talk about that too much, but Connie was extremely gentle with him uh, with regards to that. Like, if you're going to be rejected, that's the best possible way to handle that. And I'm not exactly sure if Connie's only, like, 16, where she gets the emotional maturity to be able to handle that situation so ridiculously well. But uh, 
it was very good. Well, the first thing she does is she recoils back in horror, which is, I mean, not a good way to react, obviously. But uh, <laughs> yeah. after that, yeah. Steven starts to feel a little bit vulnerable. He, like, covers the ring, which I think is, like, such an amazing just kind of way to show his, uh, his like, sudden uh, vulnerability that he wasn't feeling before because he was very confident and, like, singing sensually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, like, as soon as he that was a great up, Connie moves in for a hug and she hugs him and it's like you can just tell that it doesn't like fix things but it's exactly what she needed to do to help him the most uh she possibly could in that moment i thought that scene was like handled extremely well yeah I, well and even the way her eyes that they drew them when she said like not now and like you, you could see that she had this deep realization of that you know i really care for steven steven really cares for me and it wasn't just total horror and shock and she really was prioritizing that moment until steven you know put got her to go away online but uh yeah amazing emotional maturity for uh well i guess she's 14 and a half which also again young young for marriage human 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 conventions versus gem gem conventions uh, are they only 14 right now i thought they were like 16 i think connie yeah. is canonically a year and a half younger than steven from oh, okay. steven's birthday because well, she, like, freaks out when she finds out that he's... Oh, it's a quarter, yeah. Because she's like, you're 14? She almost drinks her entire apple juice box. So if he's 16, she, she's probably about 14 and a half. Depends on how far into 16 he is. Now, people are like, oh, but in Snow Day, because of his August birthday, he would be 17. And it's like, oh, God, this show doesn't work that way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure several seasons pass during just, like, season one alone. But. Yeah, they're, they're they're trying to say that him still being sixteen and growing pains is a continuity error, and it's like, no, it's a continuity apathy kind of thing. He is sixteen. He was sixteen in the snow day. He was sixteen in growing pains. Accept it. The seasons move oddly in Steven Universe. I mean, who's to say it wasn't a magical snowstorm? They do have obsidian running around there. Snowflake obsidian, not lava obsidian. Yeah. <laughs> Snowflake and Laramar got a little bit excited about their uh, ice shavings one day. And boom, continuity restored, baby. <laughs> so on Steven's medical chart, I guess we're like jumping around a bit now, because uh, we kind of hit on yeah. this earlier. But just some other details. Uh, I like that his address was The Beach. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, confirmed. <laughs> and Jamie is a brilliant mailman to for being able to get there every time yeah i guess it's the only residence on the beach also amazing that like no one else in beach city wants to live on the beach seems like it would be prime real estate but whatever but it's not <laughs> free real estate <laughs> well it's constantly being hit by gem debris so yeah i mean <laughs> fair his uh employment or whatever phrase they use was like retired and he used to be earth uh... ambassador was a uh, another good detail <laughs> i thought also, when she was writing down the uh, his height on the chart, Doctor Mahesh Warren, uh, Stephen would like look over and get what he, <laughs> she was writing, uh, and then he'd get uh, stressed out, and his body would grow to make him a little bit taller. I thought that was a nice detail. <laughs> but he would rather be tall. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why distance matters to Stephen. He seems very concerned about Connie moving away, but it's not clear why he cares since he has yeah. a magical teleporting lion. They have the ability to manufacture warp pads, so he wouldn't even need lion. For sure. I mean, it's representative of, like, the, the emotional distance that could potentially form between them, but yeah. it's not said that way. It's not a complaint. It's just me being nitpicky, whatever. <laughs> um, and the first time I watched that, I'm like, oh, because it's not like you have Lion or anything, Steven. I wasn't even thinking about the warp pads until just now, but... Yeah. <sighs> oh, well. Oh, well. I mean, again, it, it is emotionally him afraid of Connie moving on without him. That's terrifying him right now. And what's terrifying me is uh, staring at the, the last six episode names here. I am uh, oh, eagerly uh, anticipating Mr. Universe here, which I uh, avoided leaks for so long. But I think this is the last leaked thing that people truly yep. have an idea of what's going to go on. And then mm -hmm. everything from there on is uh, uh, well, it's spooky. And episode 18 is titled Everything's Fine. And I know for a fact that that's a lie. So oh, here we go. Oh, here there be oh, monsters. <laughs> Looking forward to some end of Evangeline type stuff happening here. It's going to be fun. Going to be excellent. <laughs> Have like episodes oh, leaked? I'm not paying attention to things. No. 
Okay. There was an audio leak. Oh, okay. Yeah. But not too much. It wouldn't be the end of Steven Universe without at least some leaking. All to the very end. <laughs> Fair. But anyway, guys, that's been us on Together Forever and Growing Pains. Join us next week for Mr. Universe and Fragments. It sounds terrifying. Until then, though, I'm GC13. I'm Ken. I'm Isabel. And I'm David. Uh, sure don't forget to leave us your... Oh, yes, no, I got it. This is my <laughs> no, territory. Ken, baby. you got it. The king is back. <laughs> <laughs> Later, everybody. Our opening and closing music is by Mark Soto. For more cartoon-related content, please visit LunarCeasefire.com.